Hey everyone, this is Chris, and today we're going to do a video on the Hubson Zeno. Um, I've attempted to make this video like three times. Um, I've called it pros and cons and different things. Um, but today's video, it's more going to be about the story of where this started, the path it's taken, and where it is today. Um, because there's been some what I call trickery. Um, I think Hubson's done a little bit of trickery and um, some some odd behavior with this Zeno um, leading up to this point. And I'm going to explain all of that. Uh, but first I just want to say that I've had this model since early October, um, just before the time you started seeing, seeing reviews. Uh, me and the first three reviews that you got we all received them around the same time. Um, so testing was kind of a moot point um, because when they do that, when they send me a test sample to test and they also send them out for review, they've already pretty much made up their mind. Um, I think they're just looking for me to find some big problems or some alarms that uh, really need to be addressed. I did find some issues, um, some of them big. Um, and what Hubson decides to do is up to them, and usually they don't do anything. Um, I can report seven things. In this case, yeah, in this case, I reported like seven things, and um, so far I'm seeing maybe two of them addressed. Uh, so it, my testing with the Zeno has been completely frustrating. And uh, so with that, I've, I've cut ties with Hubson. Um, I still will support their products uh, where they're deemed supportable. And if there's any problems or anything like that found along the way or what have it, um, I will be continuing to um, show you how to get through it or just bring it to your attention and make sure that customers uh, or Hubson fans are aware of any problems with any of their products. Uh, there's several Hubson products that I like, including the Zeno. I do like the Zeno. So just because I, I quit testing for them, I'm not doing firmware or new models or anything for them. Uh, just because I did that, I'm not going to sit here and bash them. Um, it was a decision I made. I quit. I'm done um, with that end of it. So there's no, no need for me to bash them or anything like that. There's enough people out there on YouTube uh, that are completely bashing them whenever they make a Hubson video. And uh, those are your ones that Hubson kicked to the curb. Um, they have a grudge. They have issues. Uh, they have issues. Um, so I think most people are smart enough to see if somebody hates a company that much, um, it's become a little too personal. Um, I don't hate Hubson. I like Hubson. I just don't like how they do business. Um, and when I say do business, it's a wide range of stuff. So you'll see a lot of that in this video. Hopefully I can get through this video. I don't want to make this a long video. Um, for one, <clears throat> I don't have the voice for it uh, right now. Uh, I've gone through some, some health issues uh, and um, we'll still be going through some. And, uh, my voice is a little scratchy or dry, so hopefully we'll get through this and I won't have to stop uh, and make it as quick as possible. But anyhow, um, let's go ahead and get started on everything. I've got a list of things I want to go over on it and basically tell you from conception, the whole path up until now, what has gone on with this Zeno. And uh, it's, quite, it's quite a bit. Um, but first, let's just show you this. Uh, if you have the Zeno, or if you're going to be purchasing the Zeno, um, and you're interested in a case, um, I have the Mavic, and this is the case I got from Drone Pit Stop. And I use this for my Maverick. It does work for the Zeno, but if you're looking for a case for the Zeno, uh, I think one of the better things to look for is a Hubson case, I mean a um, uh, Mavic case. And... Um, just keep in mind that the Zeno sets higher than the Mavic and it's wider than the Mavic. So 
you want a case that's got soft foam that will give and have room for the Xeno. And this case does just that. And I like this case because it's just it's got a hard shell and it's compact. It's so easy to just take with me, throw it in the trunk, and you can literally throw it. You're not going to hurt the quad at all because it's very well protected. Um, I don't recommend you throw your case around, but anyhow. Uh, it does hold the Xeno, and uh, you can see where the Xeno sits a little bit higher, and the controller sits a little higher. Um, the Xeno has these floppy props. They don't, they're not as stiff as the Mavics. So when it closes and holds those in place, that's another good thing with this case. Um, I'm sure eventually somebody's going to come out with prop holders uh, like the Mavic has. But as you can see, I've got my charging cable. I have uh, my spare props. I have all my little USB cables in here. I have my batteries in here, and then I have the controller. So it does work well. Um, I recommend this one. Uh, it, I think you'll be happy with it if you like a hard shell case. Uh, but overall, I think for folding quads, I think backpacks are the best. I have a, a medium-sized tactical backpack that works great. Uh, you've got tons of pockets and everything. You can just set the quad in there, put the controller in pockets, batteries in pockets and all that. And I can even put my charger in there, uh, my hobby charger in there. So um, I prefer backpacks, but uh, for my Mavic, I do use this case. And I just wanted to show you it does work for the Xeno. So let's just go over it, and I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. Um, as you see, uh, showing my support, I still wear the Hubson t-shirt. And I'm not going to completely bash them, but we are going to have some bashing in this video. Um, and I do think this is a good quad. Um, I'm happy with it for the most part now. Uh, but my frustration getting there and causing me to quit working with Hubson um, is just too much. Um, so with that said, I think we just need to take a quick pause and let me get out of this shirt and put on the more appropriate shirt. Be right back. Okay, I think this is a more appropriate shirt for this video. And the reason why this shirt is appropriate is because throughout my testing and the things that went led to where we are right now, it was exactly that. It was a complete shit show. So, um, I'm not going to name my video this, but um, this is basically the topic of this video. Um, it was a complete. So, let's go over the features. Um, and I know you know, most of you already know through seeing reviews, you already know the features. Um, but the reason I want to go to the features is because there are still some issues um, and I'm not going to get really detailed into those but I'm just going to point out if you have purchased this and you're out testing it and flying it keep it close be careful um, make sure you have plenty of area wide open area around you because right now let's just qualify this as an unpredictable quad uh, just because they're still working out the app and they're still working out the firmware which they have another update coming out on December 10th and I'm already told there's one being worked on that's going to follow that so I'll explain why that is in a little bit but we have follow me now this is something in testing that I just I got so frustrated with because it didn't work um, it will follow you if you uh, are an old man using a walker but if you walk normal uh, like a healthy young person um, then it just it can't keep up so I think with the new image tracking where you draw a square on the app and follow something I think since they have that and it works perfectly it works very well I think since they have that they just need to do away with follow me and instead of sitting there fighting it and fighting it and fighting it and then future updates I guarantee you I will predict to you that follow me will be a problem again usually follow me is a problem every Every other time they update firmware, they somehow find out how to mess it up. Um, so they should just get rid of Follow Me. Has issues. Uh, image tracking works great. Like I said, it works great. Um, you've got the 4K camera. I say it's not 4K. I think most people will agree it's not 4K. Is that bad? No. It's good. Um, it's a very good camera quality. 
I getting it and first testing it and trying it, I was I was so shocked and surprised that that is the quality that we got. Um, I was not thinking that. I was thinking it was going to be pretty, pretty shy, very shy of 4K. Um, it is not 4K, but the quality is very good. I'm not as happy with my other 4K models. I'm not as happy with the low light quality of the Xeno, but for the price point, they're giving us a pretty, pretty good camera. So I'm not going to sit here and harp on the, the camera quality and make that a big deal. Um, You've got the waypoint mode, and with that, uh, there was a lot of issues, and I think there still is issues uh, that, at least with my version, has been popping up. You can do a waypoint mission, and usually everything's perfectly fine, but the problem falls when you do a point of interest. Uh, so as soon as you select a point of interest, do your waypoint mission to focus on that point of interest. That's one thing you want to watch out for. So follow me in that. You want to watch out for that when you're doing your testing on your Xeno when it, when it arrives to you. Um, and then you've got your panorama. You've got line fly. It's GPS positioning. Uh, return to home, which they're now calling smart return. Works great. It lands very close to where it took off. No problems. Uh, you have auto takeoff. And then you have your typical fail safes. Um, your fail safes of like loss of signal and return home to you, uh, your uh, loss of power, low battery, and um, your 90 degree tilt. So if you tilt the quad over, let me get it out and unfold it. If you tilt the quad over 90 degrees, it's supposed to shut down. So it takes that as if you just had a crash and it will stop the motors so you don't the main thing is so you do not do damage to your motors your ESCs that are within the arms here but with that one thing I want to point out is it's got something that's another failsafe so when you when you when you when it detects that it's crashed or you're holding it off to the side or upside down um, it shuts down but the gimbal you have to be careful with the gimbal so it goes into what is called gimbal lock uh, that is a fail safe so the gimbal will lock um, the one thing with that is um, the only way I know to get it out of gimbal lock is to power off completely and then power the quad back on and let it go through its calibrations um, I don't know and it's just an after, afterthought, so I haven't tried it. But um, while it's powered on, if it should go into gimbal lock, like even during flight, technically it could go into gimbal lock. So if it does go into gimbal lock, um, I don't know if you can just go into the app and do the gimbal calibration and have it go out of gimbal lock. So that's something I still need to check. And that's something you guys can look out for too. I'm just kind of passing it on so it's something you can look at. I haven't seen, a, I don't think I've seen any talk about that. So I don't even know if people know that it does do a gimbal lock. But if it happens to you, it's not a problem with the gimbal. It's just, it's a fail safe. Um, so that's something to look for. And da, 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 da. then flight time, um, they fall between 20 and 25 minutes. Um, I been charging mine with a hobby grade charger and I have a video that I'm publishing that will show you how to take your hobby grade charger and charge the Xeno battery right now the way it comes with the cable you can't hook it up to this but I'm going to show you a quick simple mod that many people already know um, and a ton of people really don't know about so I'm going to show you how to use your hobby grade charger with the Hubson battery uh, this one is an IMAX V6 version 2, so it charges um, your LIHV batteries, which is what this is. It's more of a high voltage LiPo, so um, if you just do it in regular LiPo mode, you're not charging to the fullest capacity, and the only thing you're going to notice is maybe a minute difference in flight time. Um, but you do want a charger that, if you want full capability or full maximum charge, you want to charge uh, with a model like the version 2 IMAX 
that has the uh, mode for LIHV. So I have another video that's getting published to show you how to make up that cable. It's so simple, so cheap. It's great to be able to charge it with a hobby grade charger versus the Hubson charger because this sucker gets so hot and I just don't think it's that accurate. I don't think it's good for long-term use of your batteries and uh, it takes forever to charge these things. These batteries with this charger take, you might as well spend your day charging batteries if you have multiple batteries before you go out and fly the next day. So that's, that's in a whole nother video. We'll, we'll go over that. So you're, that's your flight time between 20 and 25 minutes. And then range, the range is meeting the uh, expectations of the, um, the published range. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there with people already showing their videos with range. Dustin Dunnell is one of them. Um, he is the best reviewer as far as I'm concerned for the Xeno. Uh, he's the most accurate and most honest and he's put out the most videos on it. Um, so I highly recommend you look at Dustin Dunnell's uh, videos and um, you'll get a you'll get truth. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is the reviewers and I don't have that paper with me. Hold on one second, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, you had in the very beginning, uh, while I was still testing some firmware, you had the reviewers um, doing their reviews. And here's the thing where Hubson, Hubson already frustrated me to this point, but I got really frustrated when I saw this and I thought this is just really unprofessional because they sent the reviewers this to review because they wanted to rush this product out so bad. They, they rushed this. Every step of the way this has been rushed. Um, and what they, what they did is they sent it to all the reviewers with different firmware. Uh, all three of the first three reviewers had different firmware and camera firmware versions. Um, so first you had RC sailors. They had and listen to all the, make sure you listen to all the versions. Uh, they had Flight Control 1035. Then you have Dustin Dunnell with Flight Control 1036. And then you got Andy RC with Flight Control 1037. Um, I noticed that in all the videos just because I look for things like that. When they showed the picture of the app, I looked at their versions and I saw it. Um, I brought that up to Hubson and they had nothing to say about it. Completely dodged it. No answers whatsoever. Why they did that. You're sending it out with test, sample, uh, test firmware and um, taking a big risk as far as I'm concerned because anything could have happened. There was, there's problems with each of those versions. Uh, there's still problems that exist today. But um, one of those problems showed up with the follow me uh, in the RC sailors video and um it's just not very professional i mean that thing wouldn't follow him it 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 lagged it stayed way behind while he was running in the field it wouldn't follow him so that's just an example but they also sent him with different camera firmware um the rc sailors had 0, 0.1.0 on their camera firmware and then uh, dustin and andy they both had 0, 0.1.5 um, <laughs> that I guess isn't a big deal because I haven't seen a huge deal in the camera firmware from testing it. Um, the only problem with the camera is you do not have control uh, of the different camera settings in the app. Um, when they first started arriving, right in the very beginning of arriving, um, I, I think that nobody had this capability at all in the app and then all of a sudden they did an app update and now you have all the camera settings there but you still can't do anything with them they're dead they they don't work um, there's a new firmware version coming out um, on December 10th that's supposed to fix all that but I am told that is a temporary firmware that they're already working on one to back that one up I totally don't understand their planning in this just get one right, put it out, make everybody happy. Should have already been there, Hubson. Uh, people are getting delivery of this thing, and they should be able to at least control the camera. 
uh, as far as the, the different uh, frames per second, your white balance, all that stuff. Uh, right now you just can't do it. So maybe December 10th or most likely December, the end of December, uh, if you go by their date system the way they are always late, um, eventually it's going to work, I guess. Uh, so that's all the different firmware versions. And the ones that seem to be the most popular that are being delivered, I did a poll in my group, and the most popular version is 1036. Um, and that's, that just happens to be the one that I stuck with. Um, versus 1.0.37. Uh, I like 3.6 better. That's the one I stuck with and that's the one I'm sticking with until they come out with a new one, which is somewhere up around 1.0.41 at this point. I'm done with them, so I don't know where they stand with that now. Um, but your current camera version is the same one that I told you, 0.1.5. And then you also have a gimbal version of 3.0.1.7 um, that's changing. All of that is changing in the next update, possibly two updates very soon. Um, so I went over how they did that. And again, that's just completely stupid to send this out for review on all those different versions. But it's not a huge, it's not a huge deal. Um, I don't... I just think it was unprofessional and uh, taking a risk. But uh, the other things I just want to go over is we call this model, or they call this model, the H117S, and it's only Wi Fi. So normally, Hubson, with all their other Wi Fi models, they call those A's. Um, I don't know why they call this the, the H117S. It should be called the H117A. That's just me being petty. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, if they come out with a Xeno that's 2.4 control, that would be an S. Um, the app, they delivered this or started delivery with this with no working app. Um, and then uh, finally uh, people got an Android app when they first started getting delivery of them. And the Android app is just Hubson's nightmare. Um, it's still not working properly. Um, it's usable. It is much more usable, but uh, I cannot recommend this quad to anybody using an Android app because even if they get it, Hubson is very well known for completely screwing that up. Um, so if you have an Android and you get this and it's working with your Android, I'd be terrified to update that app. Um, hopefully you have multiple devices where you can test it and uh, find out what it works best on because there's only going to be a few, no more, definitely no more than a handful of Android devices that this thing works good on, and that's just typical hubs in history. I know that's a hard battle working with Android devices versus iOS because you have so many different versions, but they just can't get close with it usually. Um, so the app history, uh, that's been completely gone. No Android app throughout the majority of the time from conception till delivery, uh, but yes, they do have it now, and uh, they have a lot to work on there still. And uh, I mentioned that you're going to have a firmware update December 10th, and um, I'm not sure if I was, yeah, I, I mentioned about this not, I don't think this is 4K, uh, but that is not a problem. Um, if it's anywhere between 10K and 4, or 1080 and 4K, I'm very happy with that as long as it's got the stabilization and the gimbal works fine. Uh, one other problem you have is flight stability. It's just not a, it's not a stable flyer. If I compare this to a 501A flying with just the virtual sticks or even a controller, I can fly that thing smoothly. And if you use the example of a figure eight, Flying just in a constant figure eight with a 501A, I can make that fly, I don't know what the word, harmoniously, I can make that thing fly so nice and smooth. And when you watch the video, you would almost think that that 501A has camera, stable, camera stabilization. When I do this in a figure eight type flight, it's just the turns aren't as good. Um, it descends in turns. Uh, it's extremely slow but it still should be much more stable than it is. So that's something they have to work on with the firmware. 
Uh, stability is a huge thing that I go by when I'm testing firmware and so far this does not have uh, the stability if you compare it to the firmware packages for say the 501SS and the 501A, uh, the 10, the 1.1.41 uh, package. Uh, that, that package is beautiful and I think I've expressed that in several videos. That is my favorite firmware. It's the best firmware those models have seen. So comparing that firmware with this, this is not, does not have the stability of flight like those do. Um, the slowness of this thing being down to eight, um, I think it's incredibly slow. It, it, nobody seems to be concerned with that at all. It's not a major thing. Um, I would like to see it be a little faster, but it's fine. It's not something I'm going to really harp on. Uh, the biggest thing that I think Hubson did is they screwed up when they did this. If you want to get into the club of the bigger boys, and you want to be taken real serious, you don't put a bunch of antique electronics inside your quad when you're throwing out a three axis gimbal at 4K or published 4K. Um, you open this thing up, I've already taken it apart partially and there's nothing new in here. When you look, if you've looked at their circuit boards before, their flight control boards on their other models, you open this up, it's really no big surprise. The only real difference is they've got covers over things like the barometer, uh, protective plastic clear cover over top of the barometer, and then metal covers over everything else. Um, they've got the barometer. <laughs> That's where they made the mistake. They, they definitely should have gone with an optic flow. Um, at the very least, with this, that's the only other thing I think they needed to add. If they would have added that, um, I think more people would take them as a serious contender. Um, because there's other quads out there that are coming out, and uh, some that have been just now had sneak peeks at, that compete with this Zeno, and they have it. They have it. They're not using a barometer. Um, so you need to get away from that. Uh, so why Hubson did that, I don't know. Um, and if you do auto take off and let it auto take off, you'll see it wants to come back down. You have to be up above 10 meters and have it running for a couple seconds for it to finally hold altitude. If not, you take it up, it just wants to come back down. Um, it's just, it's just all the old, in, the old, uh, electronics basically, except for the, the uh, camera board. Um, that's the only thing that they, I think, upgraded into by going to a 4K camera. So that's where they, I think they made a big mistake. Um, moving on, uh, I talked about gimbal protection mode and da, 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 losing altitude. I've gone over that. It does lose altitude in turns. Um, some people say, oh, all quads do that. No, they don't. No, they don't. I can do turns and stuff with my 501s and they don't lose the altitude like this one does. I can do it with my Mavic. doesn't lose the altitude like this one does. So um, as slow as this is in making turns, it's just losing that power and it's, it's losing altitude. It's definitely something they can fix and they really should fix it. Um, the other thing is a real big deal and what a lot of people have recently discovered is when you took delivery of your Zeno, if you already got one, uh, it came in a box much like this, and it said Zeno A. Uh, that did not raise any alarm with me. It did not raise any alarm with anybody else that I saw until all of a sudden Hubson produces and shows this new Zeno A. And what that is, is it looks exactly like this. 4K, you have the black hood right here. Um, with the Zeno A, it looks just like this, except it has a white hood right here. And that is a 1080p model. Um, that's where I think the Chinese trickery came in. Um, I would be hugely, highly upset if I spent the money on this 4K and I could have gotten a cheaper one, $70 cheaper for a 1080 model because 90% of your users out there do not have the 4K capability uh, with their computers and TVs and stuff they have at home. 
not only that, when you upload your stuff onto Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, you're, you don't have the 4K, um, the full 4K uh, processing. So um, I think more people would have been interested in a 1080 saving $70 and by saving that $70, go buy you another battery or two. Um, but Hubson introduced and rushed out this 4K model and then snuck that 1080 in there. Um, which oddly, after everybody started talking about it and making a big deal about it, it disappeared. It was on their website, they had it on there, and uh, then all of a sudden it went to sold out, and then it's been removed from the website altogether. So that's a little strange to me. Um, it could be they're updating their website, uh, because I think almost everything on their website is sold out right now, but, um, I think something's going on there. I think maybe they made a mistake, didn't mean to show it, but they showed it and they see everybody is upset. That is your typical Chinese trickery. Let's see if we sell this and it sells thousands of models at 4K and make extra money and then we'll introduce the cheaper model later. Um, but to Hubson's surprise, this did not sell. Uh, thousands of models. I don't think they broke 500 models on their pre-sales. Um, it's not a DJI product. You don't have all the big DJI fanboys or Apple fanboys um, that just jump out there and thousands of them pre-order. Uh, you know, when you get a new iPhone, it's the same thing. Um, it's hard to get them because everybody just jumps in there and grabs them. Hubson, I think, was hoping for that with the 4K, did not get it. They slipped that 1080 in there to try to get sales for that, thinking that it'll up the sales and uh, did it, either that or they did it by mistake, but it's disappeared. It's not even not even on the website anymore. I think that was dirty put, uh, a game of dirty pool. Um, I think you should have introduced them both, to, both together or you should have introduced the 1080 first and then the 4K. Uh, some people might say it the other way around, oh, it's fine, they did a 4K and then introduced a 1080. I completely disagree. I think it looks like you were playing games trying to get a bunch of pre-sales on a 4K model to make a lot of money, and it didn't work out for you. You didn't have a lot of sales. Um, I think the 1080 is going to sell a lot more than the 4K just because of the processing power it takes and the capability that everybody has with the uh, 1080 versus 4K. So I don't think this 4K is going to be a big seller. And the other thing is now that that has that has surfaced, everybody thinks that the 1080 is 4K locked. Um, I can't say it's not. I can't say it is. But I don't think Hubson and I'm 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 not bashing, but I don't think Hubson is that smart. I don't think they they know how to lock a 4K. Uh, I think they do know how to put different hardware in there, so I think the difference between 180 or 1080 and 4K is your processor. Uh, that's probably the difference. So I don't think if you get a 4K model, I mean a 1080 model, I don't think there's going to be any type of unlocking or hacks that uh, will give you 4K. I don't think it's important either. Um, I think 1080 is where we're at for a little while. Um, I might be wrong, so we'll find out when that 1080 does surface again and starts selling and people getting them. Uh, we'll see if anybody can hack it, but I don't. I'm going to say it has a different processor. That's just my guess. Hubson will not answer anything about that 1080 model, um, which also shows some sort of guilt or some sort of trick, trickery in my, my book. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was um, their customer service. Hubson seems to be repeating itself from a couple years back when I started with Hubson products. And one thing that's really bothering me right now is if you contact them, I think you get an auto reply that says that your response will not be returned until seven to 10 days. What's the big problem with that? Their warranty, their warranty is seven days. So if you buy this and you have a problem with it and you contact them and you get an auto reply that says you have to wait seven to 10 days for a response. Um, to me, that tells them that that gives them room to say you're out of warranty. I don't know if they'll use the date that you actually first contacted them, but 
I think they'll look to get out of that warranty and say that you're out of warranty. Um, either that or, you know, they'll use the, the um, translation trick that, like, they don't understand things that you're talking about, and uh, they'll just frustrate you to death to the point you'll give up. So that, that's pretty bad customer service is to have that seven to day period waiting waiting period. It just shows they are understaffed. This is a small company, Hudson, and um, they're showing it. If you're gonna put out something like this, you better be able to back it with some customer service. They've been lacking. Uh, they, they have um, Hudson representatives in the Facebook groups. They've kind of disappeared. Uh, if you are friends with any of them on Facebook, you'll see they sign on, sign off, sign on, sign off within a five minute period they sign off. Um, it's because they're dodging. I think they're just completely dodging. They'll answer a piece of my question and I have so many things that have just been completely avoided. They won't even hint any words towards it. They won't say a word about it. Uh, they'll completely skip over and go to the next thing and answer that question. Then they disappear. And one little conversation can take a week with them right now. So. Um, They've gone completely backwards. They've gone back to where they were two, two years ago with not being able to cut it totally on the firmware. They never were 100% there, but with help from other testers, myself or other testers, they did good with, they started doing good with firmware. They've slipped back down now with that. Um, for over a year, the app has just been, I'm not trying to be dramatic or over overstepping by saying, uh, it's just miserable. It's awful. I think uh, their problems with the Android is, is terrible, and the iOS has not been much better uh, the past year. Um, so they're going backwards. Their customer service, that 7 to 10 day waiting period, that's just, that's BS. Um, so from the start till now, yeah, it's been, it's been a shit show. So uh, Hubson, you really need to step up your game if you're going to, Step up the game by putting something like this out. Again, I like this quad. I like flying it. I like the video. I'm happy with the quality. I just think things should work better than they are. It's normal that there's bugs. It's normal that things aren't perfect, but I don't think you're close enough uh, from the first deliveries. And I just don't like the way you did business. Um, I think you tried to trick people. I don't think you're being honest, and now you're just avoiding people. Um, you really kind of shouldn't be in the ball game right now. Uh, there's other competitors out there that, like I said, are coming out, and uh, you're starting to see some sneak peeks of one, and there's a couple others. I'm not going to say their names, just out of respect. I'll be respectful in that part, so I don't instantly make people jump, jump to those videos. But uh, you've got some competitors out there that are going to hurt your sales in this. I really think the sales will hurt uh, for the Hubson Zeno. And it's a shame because Hubson's put it all, they put everything on the line for this quad right here. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but if you look at how much they advertise this thing, I mean, there was videos popping up every week, sometimes twice a week, uh, new videos that they made just getting, trying to get everybody excited. Nobody really bid on it and was like really excited because they know the history. They know that Hubson is not uh, that, that customer service and uh, firmware hardware company they can bank on. So um, Hubson's put a ton into this. They're not gonna get the sales. I don't think they're gonna get the sales that they're expecting and I think this is gonna hurt them. Uh, they've banked on these 501 models for so long and they've been bringing in the paychecks. Uh, but you put something like this out, it takes interest away from the 501, but then once people start hearing about it, they kind of are probably going to kind of stay away from it for a little while, I think, until they start hearing a lot more positive. So I think this one's going to hurt Hubson. I, I hate to have that happen. I don't want to see Hubson go down or uh hit hard times i want to see them continue to progress but they're always going to be behind as long as they're throwing in this old old technology and uh, not taking that leap and learning the new stuff so um they're great at making videos though they make really great videos on their youtube channel for how to's and that's only because 
The only manual you get with the Zeno is this little tiny, can you see it on the camera? This little tiny quick start guide. Um, it, it tells you nothing. Uh, their manual is a video manual in English only on the Hubson official uh, YouTube channel. It's all videos. A video on something as simple as putting the battery in and taking the battery out. They have a video on it. Um, that's great, but it's only in English. So uh, in my group, I have many people that can't speak English. Uh, they have to use a translator and um, their videos aren't going to be in their native tongue. So that's a problem. Uh, I think somebody said in, a, in the group that a French version is coming out. So hopefully they do other languages like Spanish whatever uh, is needed so other people understand because they're not giving you a manual to read. Just print a manual and give it to people to take out on the field. People shouldn't have to take a, a device and watch a video out on the field because they don't know how to do something or if they want a tutorial on how to do a waypoint mission or something like that. Shouldn't have to have a YouTube video for that. Shouldn't have to learn that way. You should be able to read. Um, so Upson's really screwed up there and that's just that's just another customer customer care uh, flaw that they have. So that's pretty much it. Um, I've gone over everything uh, as far as where they started out, the path that they took, and where they are now. Um, I'm sure I left something out, but that's really it. Uh, so those of you buying the Xeno, if you have an Android device, I just recommend you stay away. Uh, sit back and watch the show and you'll see once they get it They'll lose it again. They will make a mistake on that app and it will be an app that you Will either just be smart and not fly with or it will cost you your quad um, I've seen it too many times already with the a so um, I Don't recommend this at all for any Android user if you're an iOS user uh, you have a better chance of always being able to use this with your app and uh, it won't always be perfect. There always will be issues with that app as long as they have the same app engineer um, which is a self-proclaimed title because at least in my country you have to have a degree to be an engineer. In China you can just call yourself an engineer. Um, I think they have engineers to wipe their butts. So. Um, Anybody can be an engineer. It's all status. So uh, the app engineer, as long as they have that same person, this is never going to be a perfect app flyer. Um, it's, they'll hit it. They'll get it good, but it will go away. It's happened too many times. It's a very easy prediction. If they make this a 2.4 quad, which everybody's pushing away from that, and I understand it, but for Hubson, I think that's where they need to stay. I think they need to stay with a 2.4 gigahertz control. Um, they just seem to do better with that. They're not, they're not good with the app. And uh, when you're going to put out something like this and you want it to be really good, it's all dependent on flight, your flight control of the app. So um, you need to get rid of that engineer, Hubson, and get, get one that can do it. All right, we're dragging this out. I'll keep on talking and talking and talking. <clears throat> but... Um, that's everything, and uh, I've given my advice as to buy it or not. Uh, most of you who are just sitting back and watching and seeing what this thing does, I would just continue to do that. Um, you're not getting, you're not missing out on anything spectacular here if you wait. I think you're smart to wait. Um, so that's my advice to people, wait. Uh, you'll see a lot of videos of some beautiful footage flying and all that and it does put out some beautiful quality uh, flight videos um, but the risk uh, of having a perfect reliable quad the whole time you own it um, is just not there so uh, despite what you're seeing um, I would wait so that's my opinion that's my two cents do what you want with it and uh, Again, I'm not a Hubson hater. I'm just expressing my frustration with this product right here, what took place throughout my testing, and what caused me to just kind of cut ties with Hubson. I'm going to still continue to do my YouTube channels the way I'm doing them. 
except I'll just be buying the products after this. Uh, I have the F-22 that they sent me. That's my last free uh, thing that I am showing, and eventually I will show that, but we're in winter right now. we got a white out of snow. I'm not flying that thing because it, the wind's just going to take it away. I will just tell you the f 22s really not much to talk about. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, F-22, it's a wing flyer. It, it's not that... It's, it's not that exciting, but I'll do a video on it, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much for subscribing. Um, there was something else I was just thinking of. It doesn't matter. Thank you very much for subscribing. Uh, if you're in any of my groups, uh, post any footage you have, any new things you find. Uh, good luck testing the new firmware that's going to be coming out on the 10th because that's what you are. You're a firmware tester. Uh, they're just going to be looking for any problems or anything that people report. So once you download or upgrade that firmware into this quad, please report any problems or anything you're having. All right, that's it. Take care.